So what happens to failed MLMs? For as many failed Hun bots as there are out there, there are also many failed companies. And today we're going to take a look at another MLM that bit the dust, and many of you might be more familiar with this one, Vema. I've mentioned this now defunct MLM briefly in my what is an MLM video from early 2019, but today we're going to take a look at the rise and spectacular fall of this short-lived but really weird MLM. So hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about Vema. They were shut down in 2015, but I've gotten many requests to talk about them and I've been wanting to dig into this company for ages now. Guess some MLMs managed to toe that line between direct sales and pyramid scheme without quite being an obvious scam and Vema simply was not one of them. Even though they weren't around all that long, there's still plenty to talk about here and I find it pretty interesting to talk about what makes an MLM actually fail. Seeing them crumble gives me a really weird sense of justice, I guess. But anyway, let's get into today's Today's video and talk about what Vema was and what they did that ultimately shut them down and how they're still actually kicking around today. Let's get into it. Vema was founded in 2004 by Benson Borieko. They made energy drinks, diet shakes, and supplements. Benson's parents were longtime distributors of Amway, the MLM giant itself. I swear the pattern of MLMs breeding more MLMs is truly real and it becomes extremely evident here. Although Vemma is the infamous MLM we're talking about today, it had another big brother called New Visions. Benson created New Visions 10 years prior to Vemma and sure enough, had issues with this MLM from the start. In 1998, only four years after the company was founded, the FTC had New Visions on its radar. From the sound of it, you would think that they were a glasses company, but they sold nutritional supplements and thought so highly of themselves that they actually called a product God's recipe. So for fuck's sake, I've heard exaggerating the truth in marketing, but God's recipe? Well, the FTC reported this about them. The ads claim that God's recipe can cure attention deficit disorder or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADD slash ADHD. The ads exploited parents' fears of prescription drugs like Ritalin by making claims that God's recipe was a natural, safer alternative for treating ADD and ADHD, said Jody Bernstein director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection. New Vision lacked the substantiation the commission requires for that claim. Companies or individuals who make health benefit claims for dietary supplements or other products must substantiate those claims under commission law. Supplement marketers should refer to the FTC's recently released Dietary Supplements and Advertising Guide for Industry for specific guidance on how to comply with this requirement, Bernstein advised. I guess I've read too many bogus claims. My only surprise was that it was wasn't claiming to cure autism. The FTC continued saying that God's recipe apparently said it was an effective alternative to Ritalin. They were ordered to stop, but of course, Vema was born anyway. New Vision officially became part of Vema in 2011 before they were later shut down. And please notice the specific wording here. They didn't shut down themselves or go bankrupt. They were shut down. We'll get into that. Now, although Vema as an MLM has ended, the product does still exist. In 2018, Vema merged with Bod E Pro. Bod E Pro doesn't seem to be an MLM at first glance. On the very bottom of their page, they state that it is a violation of Bod E Pro's internal policies when an influencer engages in multi level marketing activities in a market in which Bod E Pro does not operate or does not authorize to operate. The foregoing activities may result in the immediate right of the influencer to be suspended or canceled. But if we look at an MLM master list, well, there we go, Bod E Pro in black and white. So uh, yeah, not the greatest sign in the world, but it doesn't seem to me like Vema truly died after all, it just changed locations. Anyway, let's get into the products. According to Bod E Pro, Vema is a highly absorbable, bioavailable, nutrient dense vitamin and mineral formula designed to support 95% of your cellular functions and provide you with the ultimate anti aging protection. Two ounces a day provides powerful phytonutrients and supports your body with anti aging antioxidants to fight against free radicals and oxidate stress. Fuel your body with the ultimate source of wellness insurance and give a strong boost to your immune immune system. Featuring two clinical studies, the Vema formula has been independently and scientifically validated. 
Studies show that individuals who consume Vema on a regular basis exhibit significant improvements in immune markers, a lowering of CRP, an important marker for inflammation, superior antioxidant absorption. The Vema formula provides a superior foundation for wellness and is an excellent source of anti-aging protection. And all of those asterisks all over their page make me super suspicious. So I found both the studies they mentioned pretty easily and I took a look through them. Anyone can claim to have scientific studies done or say that their supplements are God's recipe, but apparently if these things actually work, then I need to give credit where credit is due. The first study was the bioavailability and antioxidant effects of the xanthone rich magnostein product found in humans. What a mouthful. Under subjects and study, I read that 10 men and 10 women participated in this study. The trial duration was 24 hours. And right away, that's a little bit concerning to me. And well, it's kind of a lot concerning, like a 24 hour trial period. They didn't want to wait and didn't want to see the long-term effects of this product. That seems something very counterintuitive to what you would want in a study, but whatever, let's continue. This study is about antioxidants in general being good for you. Like I might as well go eat some blueberries or some kind of antioxidant rich food. The way Vema or Body Pro worded this, it sounded like the scientific studies were about their product as having a whole benefit you may not find elsewhere. Vema is certainly using these studies to promote their products at the very least. So you'd think the study they advocate for would be a bit more thorough. I mean, when I see a photo of the product, two giant green check marks and the words, the benefits of Vema have been backed by two distinct scientific clinical studies. I wasn't expecting to hear about how antioxidants are good for me. They don't say their products are rich in antioxidants. It's purposefully worded to be misleading in my opinion. Not to mention the Body Pro website says that in studies after 30 days, patients demonstrated superior antioxidant absorption, but the study itself says it was conducted over only 24 hours. Plus, the research ends with, this study did not reveal if the ORAC antioxidant capacity increase was due to some strong antioxidants or synergistic effects of many components. Therefore, a detailed study is required to confirm all possible contributors and the mechanism of the antioxidant capacity increase. So I wouldn't say needs more research to be sure is the greatest green check mark there, but okay. And the second study, of course, is also quite similar. This one did take place over 30 days, though it only had 30 people involved. Like, I'm not about to sit here and argue with clinical studies on antioxidants and vitamins. Yes, the study said there could be benefits to micronutrients and antioxidants, but it also said this study has several limitations. First, the sample size was small and the intervention period may not be long enough to demonstrate the full spectrum of the effects on health status. And that's just as important. So has Vema really earned this ridiculously high price range? $40 for a single 32 ounce bottle? We know what their studies say, but what about other studies? Well, it turns out Vema has had a few other ingredients in it, like lead. The Environmental Research Center, a nonprofit based in California, sued Vema for products offered under the new vision line that the center claimed exposed consumers to lead, a chemical listed as a carcinogen and reproductive toxin under the state's Safe Drinking Water and Toxic Enforcement Act without proper warning labels. As a result of the suit, the company agreed to submit its products to lead testing and put a warning label on them if they contained more than 0.5 micrograms of lead. When you have nonprofits called the environmental research center going after you, mm, that just might be a good time to question where you fucked up. And this was in 2010, by the way, not even close to the scandals that shut them down. This is only a little blip on the radar to them, a little oopsie. Our products have contained too much lead, oh no. Also a real fun thing worth noting here is that Benson Borieko claims that Dr. Oz called the Vema formula his favorite fatigue fighter. Oz, who announced he is going after phony endorsements using his name, does indeed list Verve on his website as a surefire way to get a jolt of energy. It's one of the few products listed by name on Oz Oz's website. This is not an endorsement, his spokesperson insists. You see, Borieko is an advisory board member of Oz's charity Health Corps, and Vema has been very supportive to the tune of nearly $1 million in donations to the charity. I'm sure Vema is a favorite company of Dr. Oz because of its generosity, said Oz spokesman Tim Sullivan. 
And a note, up to 2014, Vemma required affiliates to forego part of their commissions to donate to Dr. Oz's charity. So yeah, as you guys probably learned from previous videos, if Dr. Oz is giving you a glowing review, that is an absolutely giant red flag in my book. That man has a history with shady nutritional products, all right? I'll get into foregoing commissions and numbers in just a second, but I find it pretty damn impressive how they can build up this whole illusion of being so science-based, doctor approved with fucking lead in their products. Before I start getting too deep into scandals though, I just want to touch on a topic that I know bothers a lot of you about scams like Vemma, Amway, Cutco, just to name a few. And that's the weird predatory behavior they have on college kids and even minors. See, not only was Benson responsible for Vemma, but for Verve as well, the energy drink. Anyone who's been in college knows energy drinks are rampant there. Young adults are drinking more and more of them to keep up with workloads, I'm sure. And it's a pretty common thing and I'm no exception to that rule. And Verve especially preyed on this. Verve is not as healthy as it claims to be because it tosses titanium and other strange ingredients together. It's an odd product with a long ass ingredient list. But what truly gets to me about Verve is the fact that the energy drink was actually banned in several schools and the amount of complaints that Verve had for targeting minors. Borieko describes the Verve products as freaking awesome, uniquely healthy energy boosters that contain among other ingredients, a mixture of vitamins and mangosteen, which is a tropical fruit. Yet Verve products have a range of caffeine levels that rival some of the most popular and highly scrutinized energy brands on the market. An 8.3 ounce container of Verve Bold contains 120 milligrams of caffeine, which is more than an eight ounce container of Red Bull or Monster Energy. The FDA reports more than a dozen deaths have been associated with the consumption of energy drink products. The agency is currently investigating the health impacts of caffeine levels in an increasing number of food and beverages. Michael Taylor, FDA Deputy Commissioner for Food and Veterinary Medicine said, "'We believe that some in the food industry are on a dubious, potentially dangerous path. If necessary, and if the science dictates that it is warranted, we are prepared to go through the regulatory process to establish clear boundaries and conditions on caffeine use. We are also prepared to consider enforcement action against individual products as appropriate. In March, a group of 18 doctors wrote the FDA urging the agency to restrict the amount of caffeine in energy drinks and raise concerns about the marketing of the products to young adults, as well as kids and adolescents. The doctors wrote, given the evidence summarized below, we conclude that there is neither sufficient evidence of safety nor a consensus of scientific opinion to conclude that the high levels of added caffeine in energy drinks are safe under the conditions of their intended use as required by the FDA's generally recognized as safe standards for food additives. To the contrary, the best available scientific evidence demonstrates a robust correlation between the caffeine levels in energy drinks and adverse health and safety consequences, particularly among children, adolescents, and young adults. So not only does Vemma stand around advocating for health and wellness with their nutritional beverages, but then the same damn owner, the same people, also promote Verve, which has more caffeine than Red Bull and Monster and has potential dangers, especially for those some young people that it targets. And you just can't be both, okay? You can't talk about how important health is on one hand and then sell stupid fucking nutritional beverages for $40 a bottle, $40 a fucking bottle, and then go and peddle energy drinks on campuses that are both overloaded with caffeine. It's messed up. They had so many ties to campuses too, and they aren't stupid about it. In 2018, TechCrunch reported the following. Verve is a platform that enables people to sell experiences to their friends in exchange for rewards, such as event tickets, trips, and backstage passes. It counts more than 25,000 active ambassadors and claims to be the global market leader in word of mouth sales for live entertainment and travel expenses. The company works with more than 500 music, travel, hotel, and sports brands across North America and Europe. Up. Verve also has global partnerships with ticketing companies, including Ticketmaster, Eventbrite, Paylogic, and Frontgate Tickets. Yeah, word of mouth. That's the gentlest way to describe a pyramid scheme that I've ever heard, ever. The problem is this word of mouth isn't just, oh, hey, you should check out this energy drink, but it's pressuring young people, teens really, to become aggressive hunbots. Student debt combined with lack of experience doesn't mix well after all. And I'm pretty sure plenty of the college students that signed up with Verve were just trying to make their own money and afford school. The Federal Trade Commission had received more than 160 complaints nationally against Vemma. The Cincinnati Enquirer obtained the complaints after filing a Freedom of Information 
Act request. Consumers claim the company preys on young adults who are disillusioned with the current economy and easily enticed by get rich promises. One Mason, Ohio parent reported to the FTC that his son dropped out of college and seemed brainwashed, no longer able to think for himself as he chased his get rich quick dreams and denounced family members who questioned the company. There's a couple of success stories as are with every MLM company, but those few examples that have a giant downline and hop on the Verve bandwagon early, that's all they are is lucky. But overall, it's typically just left more debt behind for the students to deal with. And to top it all off, the owner Benson is kind of deluded. It's a low risk scenario, he said. People who lose money, I scratch my head about that. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, we offer 100% money back guarantee for the first 30 days. So even if you drink some product, I will give you your money back. If you buy an affiliate pack or you buy a case of product in six months to a year from now, you don't use it and it's just sitting there, I will give you your money back. The only way people lose money is if they drank all the product and six months later quit the business. But affiliates who filed complaints with the Better Business Bureau of Central, Northern, and Western Arizona, which are reported to the FTC, claim that they paid anywhere from $9 $1.95 to $2,000 for materials and products and had difficulty canceling or getting refunds. Vema has resolved more than half of the complaints and currently has a C plus rating with the BBB. Even if most of the reports to BBB have been resolved, that C plus rating doesn't exactly bode well. There's still an overwhelming amount of stories online that say Verve targets students and those kids are losing money. They promise that you could make a lot of money relatively quickly, said Peyton Carlucci, 20 years old, who attends Grove City College in Pennsylvania, north of Pittsburgh. They promised you that you could have a BMW or a Mercedes. Basically, they just promised you the world and back. And remember what we mentioned earlier about taking commissions to donate to charities? How the fuck is that a college student's responsibility instead of the company's? I am all for charitable donations, and I'm sure these college students were doing this to try and be generous, those that were a part of this. But if a company wants to give, it's on them, not their employees. Imagine heading into work and your boss says he wants to donate to children, so you're going without a paycheck while he still receives one. It's kind of fucked up. Vema promotes that this is all a part of young people revolution, and when they've come out with new products, they specifically design them to appeal to a younger audience. That much I can understand. Plenty of products are meant to sell to teens and college students, and those do the same. But when Vema had to announce that they wouldn't allow minors to sell Verve, well, that's how you know people were getting pissed, especially when there's a serious debate about if energy drinks should be sold to minors in the first place, given the levels of caffeine. Aside from all this, there's also the lies Vema has told for years, especially in their heyday. You know, before everyone knew they were a pyramid scheme. One of these lies is particularly scummy from 2012. Apparently, Vema had the nerve to say they were donating to charities when they weren't. The Boriecos have a family foundation that says it donates a portion of Vema's sales to support more than 170 children's hospitals around the world, as well as giving to two major charities. In fact, according to its tax return, the foundation uses more than half of its funds to pay for operating and administrative expenses and paid exactly $0 for grants in 2012, a year of tremendous growth for Vema. The Borieco family also operates a limited liability corporation to secure millions in loans and purchase commercial real estate, which is then leased to companies such as New Vision and Vema, producing hundreds and thousands in rent, much of it is tax deductible. So yeah, it's kind of funny how they can apparently be making millions and we're talking around $12 million in 2013, but they gave out zero grants. So yeah, that's super charitable company. Just makes it all the more infuriating to me that they had their own teenage employees giving up commissions to charity while they sat on their asses taking credit and only pretending to care. Obviously that's not the only problem. The FDA cited Vema after a November 2012 inspection of what was its Scottsdale headquarters, the company has since moved to Tempe, for not having a system in place to conduct investigations into customer complaints or pursue follow-up action. Conducting a review and investigation is critical to the health and safety of the consumers, the report stated. Complaints from consumers ranged from allergic reactions to the product to gastrointestinal problems after drinking the beverages. The company responded to the FDA report in December 2012, saying it had provided the FDA inspector with the consumer complaint procedures it uses. So not only is this fucked up because they're actively ignoring complaints, but these complaints are serious too. Hell, the very first one on the list dates back to someone taking Vema in 2011 and having an abdominal liver function test leading to hospitalization. Then there's nausea, abdominal pain, abdominal distension, diarrhea, vomiting, body temperature increasing, hypertension, heart rate increasing, chest pain, all of these ignored. 
and all of them leading to hospitalization. This is when you do a proper investigation, do a recall, that sort of thing. Vema did absolutely none of that, however. Thankfully, other countries seemed to catch on just as the US did. Switzerland reported Vema and Austria began criminal proceedings against them. The FTC's response, however, was lackluster. In August, 2015, the FTC announced its efforts to stop operation called Vema, which earned more than $200 million annually in 2013 and 2014. The agency said that Vema is an illegal pyramid scheme that has affected consumers throughout the US and in more than 50 other countries. The Inquirer last year published an investigation on the company that found it was specifically targeting young adults and promising monthly payouts of up to $50,000. Rather than focusing on selling products, Vema uses false promises of high income potential to convince consumers to pay money to join their organization, Jessica Rich, director of the FTC's Bureau of Consumer Protection said in a statement. We are also alleging that Vema is an illegal pyramid scheme. Now, I know I'm just one person here, and I get it, I'm probably just shouting into the void by saying all of this. But what pisses me off about the FTC is that they went back on their word and on their instinct. Vema is an MLM, it's obvious, and I think they knew it. Whenever Benson was criticized, all he said was that accusations that were wild and outrageous, and he said, if you believe in something, you speak in favor of it, that's a cult? He encouraged anyone with concerns to contact him directly and added, here's the bottom line on Vema. We're a good company doing good things. We're not perfect, but we fix what needs to be fixed. Yeah, so doing what needs to be fixed, even though they didn't have a system in place to even handle complaints. Sure. Okay, Jan, that sounds about right. But despite this, Despite it being so fucking clear that Vema was a pyramid scheme, the FTC has allowed Vema to continue, not in the same way by any means. And they're not nearly as dangerous as other MLMs out there right now, given their known damaged reputation. The FTC noted that the vast majority of participants made no money and most lost money. The company made most of its money from recruitment, not sales. Vema appealed to the US District Court in Arizona last September, and the judge ruled that it was prohibited from operating certain parts of its business, including selling the affiliate packs. The court did, however, find that some areas of the business were legitimate and allowed Vema to continue operating them. The court appointed a monitor to make sure the company was following the court order and it lifted the freeze placed on its assets by the FTC. So now Vema continues its business. You can still buy it on Body Pro. You can still buy Verve, all because Body Pro itself is nothing more than another company owned by Benson, a new name to look as if they've changed. And this was supposed to be a permanent end to Vema. They had to pay $238 million in an injunction order, one of the largest amounts of money I've ever seen an MLM was forced to pay. But even though they agreed to stop being a pyramid scheme to settle the charges, they're still selling. That's why I ultimately found it so important to make this video, because with this kind of history, scamming college students, ignoring health concerns, having to test for lead on a drink, it's not a company I'd recommend anyone supports. The money will go straight into Benson's pocket, and after all he's done, I just don't think he really deserves it. Let him sit on those giant fines and a failure of a company. It's not as if it tried to become legitimate because Benson realized what he was doing. He just got caught. That's the only difference. And this could be any MLM really. As far as I can tell, based on what AZ Central and the FTC themselves have said, the biggest reason Vema was caught is because money was solely recruitment based. Even if you might make only pennies from sales with other MLMs, technically that is still sales. Money is money. But with the Verve Energy drink, you saw stories of college kids being instructed to just literally hand out samples trying to recruit. Their Body Pro website says they're not an MLM, and as we've said, because if they step into the direct marketing world again, they would be shut down. So personally, I don't trust them for a second. So please don't buy from these people. The MLM is gone, but the fact that these products are alive is still bad enough. And so hopefully it's only a matter of time before they die out completely. So let me know your thoughts on the company Vema and what it's kind of turned to in still selling its products, but not really selling this fake MLM dream. Let me know down below. If you guys liked today's video, hit that like button and subscribe if you're new. And if you guys want more content from me, check out my description box below. You're gonna find links to my second channel for my puppy Casper, collaboration with Sad Milk. Links for like all the good stuff are down there. So again, thank you guys for making it to another video. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.